Yo, what's going on guys? Matt here and welcome back to episode number four of my Hockey Ultimate Team series here on NHL 16. So, last time we left off, we opened some packs. We got our returning user reward bonus and that rewarded us with 10 packs, 10 gold packs, and they were pretty good to us. Got a lot of good defensemen and also some pretty decent forwards. So we put those together. Our team is now completely gold with a good amount of rare gold players, especially on the defense side of things. So let's go ahead and take a look. I actually did make one change. I switched Mike Fisher and Adam Henrique just because Mike Fisher had such good chemistry with Joel Ward. So I put them back on the second line together with Raffle, as you see here. And then the rest of the lines, three and four, are just the same uh, like we saw last time. Moving over to the defensive side of things, just reminding you that our defense is looking pretty good. We got Mark Stahl and Eric Johnson on line one. Um, that's a pretty good defensive core just for starting out in Hockey Ultimate Team. So I'm excited about that. It won't change that much. And we also have Talbot and Hiller in the net. So let's get right into a game here against the technicians here in Denver, Colorado at the Colorado Avalanche Stadium and let's see how we do. So, first period action here, taking it, walking it in, sniping. Wow, look who it is, the newcomer on defense, Mark Stahl gets the first goal of the game. It seems like lately a lot of the newcomers have been putting up some points and so now it's one nothing us. Later on in the game, another snipe and guess who it is, another familiar face. It is Raffle. He comes on the second line playing with Fisher and Ward now. He's looking good. Hopefully he can start producing on the line. So it's 2-0. And later in the game, I believe he took the penalty, or I took the penalty. And for whatever reason, this guy was just fed up. So we go to the replay here, and all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I'm on the penalty kill, but he just quits. Okay, then. So we win this game 2-0, and our first game is in the books. Uh, we were pretty much dominating this guy. Actually, he had more time on attack. But shots-wise, we had more shots, and overall, I felt like I had most of the momentum. So maybe that's what he thought. He just didn't have enough confidence. So we're still in Division 10, working towards Division 9. We now have seven points, so we know we're going to Division 9. But if we win this game, or at least lose in overtime, then we will have enough points to qualify for the Division 10 title. So we're at home now. I decided to use the New York Islanders Arena. If you didn't know, they moved to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Kind of weird. It's made for basketball, so the scoreboard and stuff were kind of... Um, in a weird spot like you see here all the stands are all weird, but that isn't gonna stop us from scoring some goals So really nice goal there, and I believe that was Perron. Maybe we'll see here in a sec Yep It was David Perron from Louis Erickson and we're up one nothing seven minutes now left in the first period We get past one of his defensemen trying to get past the other We do with a nice move and we go to the backhand and now it's two nothing a beautiful goal there from Louis Erickson and now it is two nothing just a really great moves there, getting the assist from Eric, or not Eric Stahl, Mark Stahl, his brother. Later on in the game, Mike Fisher puts in another one, it's now 3-0, we're just totally dominating this guy. Talk about momentum, we thought we had it last game, we definitely had it this game, and this guy wasn't too happy with it. As we come over here, nice play here, trying to get around, it's 4-on-4 four four action actually, had a really nice move around his defense, go to the forehand and absolutely bury it, he has enough of that and he goes ahead and quits. So a really, really strong performance by me. For nothing, you see the time on attack was 31 seconds to my five minutes and 41 seconds. That is ridiculous. So we're moving on to division number nine. We got the coins for division 10, which means we can afford to buy someone. Why not get a first line right winger? I know uh, we had Louis Erickson on the first line, but I think it's time for a change. We're bringing in Jordan Eberle, 87 shooting, 86 skating. He's going to fit nicely there on the right side of Adam Henrique and David Perron. And also he has 88 hands, which is really nice. Uh, second line stays the same. Raffle, Fisher, and Ward don't want to mess up that chemistry. Erickson moves to the third line on the right wing. And Rutu got bumped down the line to line number four. So that's how the lines look. And we will go back, play some more games. This time we are in Winnipeg facing Fleeb. We'll see how we do here. This is actually my first time playing in the Winnipeg Stadium. Kind of cool to see all the new graphics in NHL 16. But basically, yeah, this is how this game looked like. It was not really fun at all. I had the one nothing lead, but it was just a lot of this. A lot of lag, and I had no lag in my other game, so I knew it wasn't me. I knew it was him. He actually loses his connection to PlayStation Network and or EA servers, so he is not going to be able to finish the game. We had a one nothing lead already, so... We go ahead and get the win. So our first game in Division 9 is a short one, but it's successful. We get two points, and now we are looking to get a win and at least not get relegated back into Division 10. So we're back at home in Brooklyn against the Weasels. 
and let's see if we can continue our dominance at home. We are really playing well at home. But he's going to come in here. Nice chance there. It just barely misses, but he's going to come right back with a nice one-timer. Just a bomb, and he gets past Cam Talbot there with his Thomas Vanek. So he's up 1-0 early in this one. I think this might be the first time, actually, we don't have the lead. But anyways, we're coming back in this one in the second period, and look who it is. Mike Fisher gets the goal. It kind of squeaks underneath his goalie's pad, but uh, honestly, we're going to take that one. It's 1-1 now, and he'll get the assist from Raffle. Time running down now in the second period, but he's going to get a nice pass out front and just pick that corner on Cam Talbot. Cam Talbot's angle wasn't really the best there. I don't want to complain too loud because we kind of left him out to dry, but at the same time, Thomas Vanek, great shot, and he buries it. So they're up 2-1 to one now. This is a tough game, toughest game I've, faced, uh, I've had so far in this episode, but we're going to come right back and tie it. We know that we have the offensive firepower to do so, and Tomo Rutsu has something to say about being demoted to the fourth line. He gets a goal, and we tie up the game at 2. However, third period starts, and he takes the lead right back. Another one-timer in front. I realized, I know it took me long enough, I realized that I was just allowing way too many one-touch one-timers in front of the crease. So his Duchesne makes it a 3-2 game, but we're going to come right back with multiple chances, and finally, we bury it. It's going to be Joel Ward tying the game up at 3 here, about 5 minutes into the third period. So we are going back and forth, back and forth, and guess what? We're going to overtime. 30 seconds left. We'll see what we can do. We get a pass up, and we're going to get past the defense. We have a breakaway. The game is on our stick. Game over. He controls the goalie, which was a very bad mistake, and we make sure to make him pay, going forehand, backhand, top shelf, and we win the game. We had the, well, it was either tied or we were losing the entire game. It was back and forth, but when it counted, we tied it up, sent it to overtime, and then when it counted even more, we got the two points, we got the victory, and we are 2-0 in Division 9. Four points now, we know we're not getting rele relegated to Division 10, which is very good, and now we'll move forward to the final game of the episode here against the amateur ducks looking pretty nice with those all-star jerseys and logo back here at home in Brooklyn hopefully we can get another win for these fans in the first period taking it over and seven minutes in or actually seven minutes left we get the one nothing lead a nice little cross crease pass over to Louis Erickson now on the third line but he gets it from Fisher and Perron later in the game raffle makes it to nothing this guy yes uh, well, his name was Amateur Ducks. I guess he was kind of living up to that amateur uh, side of things. He wasn't the best defensively. I found that if I could do that one-touch, one-timer pass thing, I could be pretty successful. So it's 2 nothing me. However, he's not going to give up. In fact, he's putting kind of a weak backhander on net. Cam Talbot really should have had that one. But he's going to cut our lead in half as Marcus Johansson gets the goal, assisted by Coyle and Ekblad. And it is to 2-1 us in the second period, though, trying to answer and get back our two-goal lead. And that is exactly what we do. Nielsen, in front of his hometown here, or his home crowd in Brooklyn, gets the goal, puts us back up by two, three to one, and Chris Versteeg gets the assist. A minute and a half left. We have the game one, right? Well, this guy doesn't think so. Here's one goal, getting it, and now our lead is cut down to one. That is a great spin move by him. He passes it over, and Nicholas Jalmerson gets the goal. Galchenyuk with that nice pass. 45 seconds left, and Braden Shen ties it up at three. Just a crazy game here, back and forth. Well, I guess not so much back and forth. It was all me, and now it's all him. And like I did to the other guy, he's going to tie it up late in the game, and we are going to overtime. Two and a half minutes left. He's going to skate this one down, try to end it. We intercept it. Mark Stahl trying to get it, and now finally we're going to get it. Here's Eric Johnson taking it up. Here's a breakaway. Two minutes left, and he snipes. What a beautiful goal from Eric Johnson. Absolutely dirty. Just snipes his goalie so bad. And we take the victory. Another win this episode. We get over 1,000 coins. And we improve to 3-0 in Division 9. Giving us 6 points. And now we are only 1 point away from that Division 8 promotion. So I am really having an awesome time on Hockey Ultimate Team here on NHL 16. I hope you are too. If you don't have the game, make sure to pick it up. If you do want more of these episodes, go ahead and drop a like. I want to try to get some more Raiders Connected franchise out. But yeah, had a very good time. We're 7-1-1 one one through our first 9 games in Hockey Ultimate Team 16 this year. Super excited to keep playing. And next time, we will try to go for division number eight. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for some Madden and some NHL. Until then, guys, I will see you later. Peace. Yeah.